Can eating more animal protein protect you from heart disease or death? A new study suggests maybe, but we need to be cautious about it. But nonetheless, it brings up some interesting points about the purported harm to animal protein, which certainly doesn't seem to be present in this study. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to review this study uh, published in the Journal of Gerontology titled Animal Protein Intake is Inversely Associated with Mortality in Older Adults, the Inchianti Study. And the, the title sort of says it all. In the study, eating more animal protein was inversely associated with mortality, which means the group that ate the most animal protein had the lowest risk of death in this study and the lowest risk of heart disease death. Um, and the same was true for total protein intake. Now, let's talk about the study. It was an observational study using food frequency questionnaires, nutritional epidemiology, you know, very low quality data. So that's the first caveat. So why do I even cover it? Well, because there are so many nutritional epidemiology studies that reportedly show the opposite, that eating more animal protein is associated with a higher risk of death. So it's important to show nutritional epidemiology studies that show the opposite, because when you have a study like this showing the opposite, the question is how big of a risk can it really be, even given the low quality data? If it showed a benefit, it doesn't prove it's beneficial, but really makes you question how dangerous it has to be. So some of the caveats, the average age of this population was 75 years old. Um, they were in two community, two communities in Italy, so you know Mediterranean population. There were 1,100 individuals followed for over 20 years. Uh, their average protein consumption was 74 grams per day, which is 1.1 grams per kilogram. I assume that's per, per kilogram of total body weight because um, they don't specify, which would mean a little bit higher for ideal body weight, most likely. Now, the other interesting thing is when you look at the baseline characteristics, in, in a number, or pretty much all, I would say, of the observational studies that show a, a association with harm from eating more meat, they tend to be higher percentage of men, uh, maybe older, smoke more, or less physically active, less healthy at baseline. In this study, that wasn't the case. They're actually more likely to be women in the fifth quintile of, of animal protein intake, which is pretty unusual. And they, they ate less overall energy, less overall calories, I should say, and of course, fewer carbohydrates, 46% versus 54% in the lowest animal protein group. And that's important because, you know, not all protein is the same, right? Animal protein is a uh, much more efficient source of protein. Our bodies absorb it better. Uh, we get the full complement of amino acids and we get those amino acids and that amount of protein with fewer total calories and fewer carbohydrates. Now, is that important? Well, maybe not for everybody, but certainly it's important for people who are sensitive to carbohydrates, and it could be important for people who want to reduce some of their caloric intake. So that efficiency in protein is important, and that's why animal proteins really are, are the best source of protein per calorie and per gram of carbohydrate. So, like I mentioned earlier, though, some studies show uh, an association with increased risk of cardiovascular disease and mortality, but that's really hard to separate from that healthy user bias. The study didn't have the same healthy user bias and showed the opposite, showed an inverse association. So the higher the consumption of animal protein, the lower the risk of dying from heart disease or dying from any reason. Now, one of the other knocks though is that animal protein is associated with cancer risk. Well, not in this study. There was no association between animal protein intake, plant protein intake, or total protein intake and cancer risk. So why could this be? Well, we know adequate or higher protein intake is associated with improved strength, improved muscle mass, less sarcopenia, less frailty. So that's key. Another important factor of this study though is the majority of the plant protein came from cereal. Um, so that's a little bit different. You know, how, would, how would, what would it be if it was from soy or from legumes? Um, would that potentially be different? This study didn't assess that. And would it be different if these were 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds? All those questions are unanswered. But I think the key take-home is this is just more evidence that the, the concerns about animal protein really are overblown. Because when you can see a nutritional epidemiology study showing an inverse association, the question has to be how harmful can it be? So if you, don't, if you like plant sources of protein, if you like legumes, if you aren't concerned about your carbohydrate intake or your total calorie intake, then that's perfectly fine. You can get your sources um, 
of protein from plant sources. Just make sure you're mixing and matching so you get a full complement of amino acids because many of plant protein sources are, are deficient in one or more amino acids, but you can easily combine them to, to get an adequate amount. And we have a whole guide on uh, low carb vegetarian and even low carb vegan diets, which talk about mixing your protein sources to make sure you're getting an adequate amount. But if you enjoy animal so sources of protein, if they're an important part of your diet, and if you're looking to maximize your protein intake, for the minimum number of calories and minimum number of carbohydrates, and then animal sources are clearly the way to go. And studies like these help us to see that really the, the reported risks of animal protein seem to be pretty much overblown. Um, and if it's part of your overall healthy diet, that's the most important concept. And I really think that's where the, the attention needs to be, not just what does this isolated group do or this isolated food do, but what does the overall dietary context do? So if eating animal protein helps you feel full, helps you enjoy your meals, helps you create a negative calorie balance that improves your metabolic health and helps you maintain your muscle mass and your resting metabolic rate and helps you with healthy weight loss or healthy weight maintenance, then that's a victory. Now, if eating animal protein sources is part of a hypercaloric diet that is giving you more calories than you need, that's also high in carbs, that's causing weight gain um, and chronic inflammation, okay, that's a, a bad situation that you don't want to be in. But we can't, even then, we can't just blame it on the animal protein itself. It's on the overall diet. So seeing the food within the context of the overall diet is the key. Um, and again, we have a whole guide on red meat as well to walk you through the science on that so you can better understand the risks, where where the data for the risks come from and why there are so many holes in that data and why the risk is likely neg negligible for each individual. All right, if this was helpful, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody.